RS3 and WRM2020 are two cubes with similar features, both with a dual adjustment system and without the adjustable magnets. Which makes me wonder what's the point of a flagship these days, considering 3x3s like the Little Magic and Meilong are so good. In fact, I broke my PB single and average of 5 using the Meilong. The first feature I'm going to talk about is the speed. So I would say both of these clips are very fast, but speed is an adjustable value due to the compression system. And I would say that since I like fast clips in general, I just kept the compression system at the minimum possible value, meaning out of 0 to 8, I chose setting 0. And uh, I would say that the RS3 2020 is generally lighter and faster than most 3x3s I've used, including other flagships, and also include Meilong and the Little Magic. Whereas the WRM is way faster than anything I've ever seen or touched, like way above the RS3, and it's, I've, I would say that the only cube that can kind of compare with this is the MGC5, which is a cube that I've purposely thrown slow loop inside just to slow it down so that I would make less mistakes in my source. Whereas I don't see a need to do this to the WRM because it's it's a 3x3 three three, so it's fewer layers are easier to control. This For corner cutting, this is another value adjustable by the compression system and also stability. Although I would say that like the spring would control how much you can corner cut. And then the dual adjustment system controls how easy it is to corner cut. And then stability in a sense is the inverse. So in general, I think these two cubes are more or less within what a typical 3x3 would do in terms of how stable they are and how much the corner cuts. So it goes about close to 45 forward and like full piece minus this rounded part of the whole reverse, which I think any 3x3 would do it these days. But the WRM takes less effort to perform all those corner cuts than the RS3 and the RS3 in general is a more stable cube so it, it's, it feels more solid and like this one will squish a little bit more easily when you turn fast. So uh, I, I wouldn't say one is superior over the other in this particular ca category, it's more like a give and take. For the magnets, the RS3 has weak magnets and there is a plus mod where people stack a second magnet on top of the existing edge magnets. So I didn't do that to this RS3 at all because I like the default magnets and like I generally prefer a low turning force and smooth feel but I did the plus mod to my also GTS1 in 2018 because that cube has strong inner magnets and weak outers so I I, I try to equalize it. Yeah but that's the 4x4. Uh, otherwise I do I do think that the RS3 magnets are nice by default and there's really not much I want to change. Whereas the for the WRM is slightly stronger than the RS2 which does complement the faster speed of the cube. But again I think magnets are I would say also, no, nothing really outstanding, it's just good enough to do their job and that, that's really all you need. For the size, okay, this size is actually a very, very big thing when it comes to the, the WRM, but I'm going to talk about this one first. So, the RS3 is 55.5, which is the same size as the Meilong, and uh, also, just, just to compare with the little, little Magic, I'm going to measure that, and that came in at 55.8. What's the size of the WRM? It's 55.0, so it's half a millimeter smaller than the... 55.5. This may be a positive point to people who love smaller cubes, but for me I would say this is a total deal breaker that makes me not want to use the WRM. I find that gripping this cube is a huge pain, I'm really stretching my fingers inwards. The D2s are very annoying to do because my pinky and ring are, actually, uh, like, they're constantly below the cube rather than within com comfortable range of the D layer which I would usually get with something bigger. Uh, and and while I do have similar problems with 56 and 55.5, I kind of tolerate it, but in 55.0, like, this problem really feels much worse. And, yeah, I generally struggle to turn like, super fast on this cube because like my grip is just not, not very comfortable. For the texture, I would say both cubes are frosted, but it's different from the Meilong tree. So exteriorly, if you were to shine light on the cube and look at how big the frosted grains are, then the grains on the... RS3 and WRM are actually a lot smaller than they are on the Meilong and like then when you touch it the cube also feels quite different to touch and generally if you accidentally rub it against your fingernails it's, it really doesn't annoy you at all it's, it, it still it feels just as nice as a polished cube whereas if you do something like that on the Meilong tree you really feel the frosted texture in your fingernails and that is kind of why I actually rated the Little Magic better than the Meilong. Another thing about texture and the feel in general is that the WRM 2020's interior feels like it, it is. It just feels softer and smoother than the RS3. It's quite unique to Moi and like generally they are main brand. They do feel that they have a thick layer of this imaginary soft loop, although I would say it's more plastic quality than actual loop. 
and like they, they do feel really really soft and smooth with. whereas other brands outside Moi and like uh, as well as uh, the classroom brand itself like this so called smoothness layer is a bit thinner and you can feel the plastic a bit more in a way the WRM and the RS3 are in 2020 what the GTS2 and RS2 would have been in 2017 and 2018 so is there a point in getting a flagship? I would have to say some additional engineering has to go into the WRM to make it lighter, faster and smoother. But in terms of like the actual number of seconds to solve the cube, I don't see any benefit about paying additional money to get a more expensive cube than the RS3. I'm not talking about this cube in particular, but literally anything that's more expensive than this RS3, unless you're specifically looking out for the, the, the particular feel, whether you actually like lighter, faster and smoother cubes is really all up to personal preference because some people like to have more feedback and as a result a crunchier cube is better. Also some people would like a, a slower and heavier cube for like more control. So unless you are really specifically seeking out that characteristic soft, smooth and really fast turning then like which in that case the WIM would be really worth it but otherwise like for me I would prefer to use the RS3. So as far as average timing goes uh, I would say that the RS3 is the fastest I've been on the 3x3. So my average is about 15.7 sometimes even 15.6 which is you know I, I think it's a full second ahead of my current main which RS2 and then comparing with the Little Magic and the Mei Long I average around a higher 15 but maybe a very low end of 16 on those two and uh, for the WRM okay for this one I have, I'm not even sub 16 but I think this is not really due to the cube being bad it's more like I don't like the size so for mechanism I would say that the square foot of the centerpiece is the main feature of the RS3 and like this also occurs in the 2019 version and this feature actually dates back all the way to the Shengshou Fang Yan from 2016 and it's a very smart design choice to achieve more stability without compromising the reverse corner cutting. So basically this foot makes the whole centerpiece a bit square, like it makes the area a bit square so the edge can ride across a larger flat surface on top. Because the whole reason why pieces are rounded in the first place is for reverse corner cutting. If you think that compromises the reverse corner cutting, then I've you have to look closely at the corners and you will see that the corner is a little bit hollow at one point and the point where it's hollow out actually coincides with the square so it actually never catches another major thing about the RS3 2020 is what it has improved on compared to the 2019 version so the 2019 version has this double corner base design where the second base is screwed onto the first base so you basically have an extra piece of metal inside every corner that's eight pieces in total and here they're basically, instead of having two bases, it's just cast as a single piece double base design and this interlocks with the double torpedo, something like that. Okay. For the WR2020, the, actually what Moi has done is they changed the torpedo style, so this is actually more, I would say this is actually kind of like more similar to gun. Uh, so if you were to compare the original GTS3, which the WRM version 1 is basically a GTS3 with without the ridges and they all use the same torpedo design as the RS3 meaning they have double torpedo and then the corner has double base which locks underneath each one of the two torpedoes whereas in the gun system which I think the WM20 has switched to it's no longer a, a split double torpedo instead they have a, a big torpedo that is fused with a smaller one below and then the corner base is just a corresponding opposite shape and I, I think one advantage that this achieves is just the total amount of plastic needed to create the piece because if you were to compare the base thickness between the RS3 and the WRM you can see the WRM base is really a lot thinner another feature which this is very characteristic of the Wei Long they have these two wings that bulge on the side and it makes it extremely difficult to pluck out pieces from the cube and another thing about this cube is the anti-stick design so in most cubes you have this you just have a set of lines that run parallel to the rotation whereas on the WIM, you also do have some lines that run parallel, but the corners especially, they actually have a circle and more, some dots around it. I would say what this does is it actually adds some verticality. It's like what mechanism really is, is a, is a divide between the, the pieces. So like imagine if some of the anti-stick lines have some vertical motion, they, you can actually trap loop in the more, like, mo like more along the vertical surface of this piece. And that's where that, that literally helps to cover every contact point where the cubes where the pieces rub against each other. Whereas if it's purely horizontal, meaning you just have three stripes like that that run parallel to the pieces, then the loop is all going to be concentrated within that three stripes rather than being spread across the 
the entire vertical. The gun honeycomb achieves the same effect and compared to a cube with a purely horizontal anti-stick design, I do not feel the difference at all. And I am guilty of actually thinking of my own anti-stick design with some verticality in it. You might see that in a future video. But